I got an offer the other day from one of these people who they they um they do weddings but how they do it is they're centralized someplace in america and they have a they have a nice website and they have all these these great footage of weddings but they didn't capture the weddings so let's say someone's having a wedding and they pay them i say a couple thousand dollars they then put out an ad or hire local photographers to capture the footage pay them pennies on the dollar or us in, in that case and they get the bulk of the money smart for them crappy for us also crappy for the client because there's no personalization that the client has they got to go back through this this middle person all right so this offer was for $200 for three hours of footage. Sounds good, right? $200 for three hours of footage. So if you, at face value, that's almost, I don't know, two eights, two seven, two nineties, so almost, uh, uh, three eights, 24, I can't do math. But it's 60 something dollars an hour, if you think about it. No editing required. All right. Still garbage, because you gotta think. If if you're there for three hours, it means you have to set up for at least thirty minutes. Let's say you're the most efficient videographer out there. You arrive thirty minutes before you got everything set up. All your filters, if you're using lights, tripod at a minimum, gimbal at a minimum. So. Th and then half an hour to, to break everything down. So that's four hours. Half hour on each end. That's four hours that you're there for. Then you got to consider travel time. As in this case, the place was an hour away at a minimum. So that's six hours now. So now that 200 bucks looks like garbage money. Might as well get a regular nine to five job. So I told this person to go sit down somewhere. I'm not leaving my house for less than a certain amount. In my view, this only makes sense if you are already at the event or it's a friend of yours and even a friend of yours should have some respect and pay you more than 200 bucks to capture an, an important event on video, even if it's with your cell phone. It's got to be more than that. Otherwise, don't go. In my view, it's not even worth the time of day to do these jobs. If this is what videography has come to, then let paid videography die a slow death. I'm okay with that. Go take videos and pictures of your friends and of uh, birds and dirt and water. I'm cool with that. In any case, I always advocate for doing this stuff only if you enjoy it first. If you're coming into videography thinking you're going to make a quick buck, there are so many people out here trying to take advantage of videographers. And that's not to say I deserve to be paid thousands of dollars right now. I am reasonably good. But I didn't go to school for this, and I haven't been doing it for decades. Regardless, the cameras that they have these days, you can get high-quality footage with minimum effort. Right? But you still got to know what you're doing. And these middle people who are trying to take advantage of people with high quality work, awful, awful, awful. And the more you do these cheap jobs, man, is the worse you make it for future videographers. I, I just think we're lowering the bar for ourselves because then people are going to think good work is cheap and they don't want, they don't want to pay. It also goes for clients who want to pay you um, cents on the dollar for top-notch work. If it's important enough for you to reach out to a photographer slash videographer, then you should be paying. Otherwise, do it with your phone. Don't bother calling anybody. Because it costs time and effort for people to buy their gear. Even if they're renting it or borrowing it. If they, even if they have one camera, it still costs some money. If they're using their phone, it still costs time and effort. They gotta know what they're doing and, and, and they have to show up 
record your stuff and if you want it to be edited then that's also time and effort you gotta pay people for that if you're paying an electrician to come fix your light if you can do it do it yourself you know why you call you know why you call an electrician because you can't do it same thing with videographers the reason people still call videographers and photographers is because they try it with their phone and it's garbage and they want it to look like what they see on TV and what they see on, on YouTube. Well, that stuff is done by people who know what they're doing. The other day I got a call from a client and the client wanted me to Photoshop a family member on a bike, right? And they sent me the bike and they sent me the picture of the family member. When the, the guy was standing, I said, do you have one of them sitting? No. And they want magic. So I, said, I did the best I could and he was, I put him next to the bike from so I took one picture put it on another picture and did some editing and I said alright it's ready it's gonna cost you 80 bucks they didn't want to pay it no I had to pay for the software plus the time for the editing and the fact that they couldn't do it that's why they called what do you want me to do it for five bucks I think social media has devalued the the, the the work that editors and photographers and videographers do because you can see high quality work for free on YouTube and you think I can get that for little or no money no I would advise people who are doing this cheap job to stop doing it and if this is what it's come to well let people go get their own AI software <laughs> buy their own Da Vinci stuff and Premiere Pro and Photoshop and all that let them do it themselves it's fine it's fine go do it yourself pay people what they're worth you wouldn't go to the doctor and say listen I can google my own symptoms so I don't need to pay you in fact I don't even need health insurance you know what? you're gonna pay it regardless right you wouldn't go to your mechanic and say listen I can google my uh, my engine oil type of engine oil and I can google what kind of nut I need I'm gonna change it all myself most people don't they still go to the mechanic right you you, sh you can make your own clothes you can go buy the material you can buy a sewing machine and sew it no you still go to Walmart or wherever you shop and go buy the clothes or go on Amazon and the examples continue so the other day I was at an event and a lady uh, they hired me to do uh, photography for this photography yeah it was photography uh, for the event and there were people with their phones all night trying to take pictures and I watched them struggle expensive phones and the pictures came out like garbage <laughs> because when people when they advertise these phones with great cameras what people don't understand is the pictures that are being shown are generally taken by people who know what they're doing with cameras so yes you can get some good shots out the out the, out the phone camera without editing but it still has to be in the right lighting this is just how it is so I see people grab their phones and they think oh I'm gonna get good audio I'm gonna get a good lighting and right now it's pitch black or there's minimum light I, I'm gonna get it just right and they go home and they look at it and it looks like garbage and that's why they hire someone to do it and I let them do it and I struggle and I say all right cool all right now can I take it with my camera and when then they took it with my camera they realized oh this is better there's a reason why you pay someone to do it it's just how it is right if you're getting a cheap job and you it smells like someone's taking advantage of you don't do it that goes for any job it's okay it's okay go get a regular job and then do it do what you love as a hobby then and if someone pays you to gives you the right amount of money to do it good if they don't don't do it in my view it's not worth the time and you're doing the, a disservice to the profession all right man take it easy